Super excited to be reporting from my backyard for the last time in the summer. It's November 3rd. I made it as long as I could. I'm going to check what I have and what I'm pulling. It's November 3rd. I still have freaking tomatoes coming in. Um, as crazy as it sounds. It was a great year uh, for tomatoes. I do have to pick all these today, though. Unfortunately, with the frost. And we did have a cluster of big Polish tomatoes come back. So I'll put these in a brown paper bag and a shoe box and I'll let them do their thing. But that's what I still have left. Uh, pick all these tomatoes off today. Going to pick this sweet potato as well. So this is my last tomato harvest. Uh, we made it till November 3rd. Super pumped about all these tomatoes I have this time of year. Once again, I'm in Pennsylvania, the Northeast region. And Frank couldn't be here today. He's actually down in Miami watching the Dolphins uh, for the second time this year. Cauliflower, I would say, is a fail. It's not going to get big enough before the frost, and there's nothing I can do about it. Still have kale. This kale appeared in my first video. It's still cranking. I'm not going to touch it. I just trimmed up its buddy, and we made kale trips, and this is still coming in. So I'm going to leave the kale. We're going to dig this sweet potato pot up, and I'm hoping we have something in it. Everything finally died, so it's time to dig it up. If you notice, these are great indicators always for me that the weather's done. Uh, basil's completely dead now. This was a heat-resistant tomato that's coming back that wilted. And the only real thing that will be thriving right now, believe it or not, I still have some peppers coming in, but uh, my thyme. So I'm going to pick all the thyme and dry it out as well and save that for winter. It's been an awesome summer. I got to say it's been a great fall too, right? Great crops. Hope you guys learned a lot. I don't have the garden getting here today. Like I said, Frank's down in Miami torturing uh, Dan Marino and Drew Rosenhaus actually. He sent me a photo with Drew. So uh, we're going to take up the sweet potatoes, see what we got. I already moved this. I'm going to just see if we have anything. We might not have anything. Uh, that's a rock. Let's keep digging here, see what we got. We had a rock to start. I think I got another rock. Oh, <laughs> we got one. All right, so we did get one. Um, see if we can get any more. I only produced one out of this plant for the year, so I'd be starving if I was dependent on this. Still have to check the bucket, see if we did better in the pot. But the strawberries are still running, so I don't know if anybody else is experiencing a great strawberry year year but these actually came back and i'm just gonna let them go uh see where it goes Turn a little buds over here um so let's see how many strawberries come in i'll just cover these with cloth at night um to prevent them from getting frosted let's see what we got in this bad boy if we can pull anything out we produced one in the ground the pot produced all this and i put these in late so i knew i wasn't going to get a crazy harvest but i cannot believe the pot actually produced a meal this is what the, came out of the pot and we only got one out of the ground uh for you potted planters once again sweet potatoes were tough to do for me this year in the ground i only got one in the pot though however i produced a meal so super pumped about that now the fun part starts breaking down the garden ouch it does suck breaking things down as your garden grows. You're going to have multiple size poles, multiple size uh, trellises. It just is what it is. Finally, I have everything broken down. Even little Joe's bummed out from the window. Sorry, bud. Too cold out today. So just to recap, these are all the red tomatoes I actually got. It's November 3rd. These are all my sweet potatoes that I picked on November 3rd. And then with my green ones, I'll just put in a bag. I'll put them in the basement. As they turn green, I'll pick them. We're going to process the sweet potatoes into uh, mousse. My wife is peeling the sweet potatoes right now. And we'll take these sweet potatoes then, and we will boil them. That will be the first step. 
this the lovely Kristen's now just rinsing them off. Look at the color of these, though. They're vibrant. Um, you know, we did these ourselves, so definitely a different color. You can tell the difference, and we're going to turn these into chocolate sweet potato mousse. We are finally boiling the boil for about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, it is a tedious process peeling these things, so give my wife a lot of credit. Some people boil them with the skin on, but they cook quicker like this, and then cutting them up also they cook quicker. All right, this is a tedious process. My wife is just straining these now. I'll let them cool for a little bit, and then we'll put them in the food processor. So Kristen, what's the next step? All right, so we let these cool off. Now I'm just gonna dice them. And the recipe calls for about two cups of them. So you just dice them up quick. We have a little extra, but that's all right. And then we're gonna throw them in the food processor. Okay, now it calls for four to five tablespoons of cocoa powder. So we're gonna start off with four. And then if we want it more chocolatey, we'll bump it up to five. Now, once again, this is healthy, right? This is a great way to make sweet potato. We were <laughs> seeing what's the healthiest way we could do this. So this is like dairy-free, right? Um, well, we're using coconut milk, so it's dairy-free. It's um, it's not vegan-free because we're using honey. But, but we're not vegans. So, you know, if you used rice syrup, you'd be vegan-free. But um, we'll be on to the next step after this. Now she's gonna put a pinch of salt into this, just a little salt. Um, you know, you really don't need to measure for that. Should we throw a little cinnamon in? We're gonna I throw. Like cinnamon yep, we're gonna throw a little cinnamon on. So that's a hidden gem alert. On the fly, we're gonna throw a little cinnamon in. What's the next step? Honey? All right, we're gonna do two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Get that in there. So right now we got the sweet potato, the cocoa, a pinch of salt, and two teaspoons of vanilla extract in And there. then we put a little cinnamon in just because we like cinnamon. So now what's uh, the next step? All right, so we are going to put in three tablespoons of honey, but you could use maple syrup. And then this is just going to sweeten it up naturally. So that's how it's healthy. We're not dumping a bunch of sugar in it. We're trying to go as healthy as we could for this dessert. So it is a very healthy dessert, as healthy as it could be. Yeah. So, hon, how much of this coconut milk are we going to start with? For, for starting, it says about a half cup, and then we're going to start blending it. And if we think we need it a little bit more liquidy, we're going to add more to it. Okay. Now, don't get crazy when you open the coconut milk and you see it might be like on the top hard it right? looks like coconut oil but once you get in there mix it around it will get milky for you yep here, here we go baby rock and roll so as of right now we have every ingredient we're going to use in here this is going to be less than you know 600 calories i think the sweet potatoes were 350 right <laughs> did you just I did, no, he the sweet potatoes he, were 350. He doesn't know how many calories And I gauge him with everything else. You don't count, you know, <laughs> you don't count calories. That where we're counting calories you trying tonight. To Here we go. We love KitchenAid. And this is just on low. I don't want it to get too crazy on high. And then we're going to do this in steps. I'm going to take this off, scrape the sides, and just, you know, redo it. And I'm probably going to add a little bit more of the coconut milk, I think. If you can notice, it already has that mousse look to it, and it's got a really nice smell. Oh, it tastes really good. It tastes good. And uh, the reality of it is anybody can make this. So a different way to process your sweet potatoes. We literally picked these sweet potatoes, what, on about a six? Hours yeah. Ago. So basically farm to table tonight for dessert. We are pulling a bogey since we're not counting calories and throwing some marshmallows in here. We put a little bit more honey in too to sweeten it up because it was really chocolatey. So I would go three table tablespoons of the cocoa powder and then do four. Start off at three and then go higher if you want it higher. And what about honey? Instead of the three tablespoons, would you go I'd four? I'd say we put four in, but okay. that's just So us. you go less cocoa and a and little more, more honey. honey. Yeah. Look how beautiful that chocolate sweet potato mousse came out. We're going to put it in our mason jars. My beautiful wife did a great job today. 
Once again, I'd like to thank my wife for the help. Uh, thank you, sugar. I did everything. <laughs> and this looks phenomenal. It really does. It really does taste good, too. For being like, you know, a healthy dessert, it's it's a good one. And we're going to put it in mason jars. We're going to put it in the fridge, let these bad boys cool down. And then if you want to put Cool Whip on it or marshmallows or, you know, whatever. Good to go. Yeah. November 3rd, shutting down the garden for good. It's kind of a sad day. The frost is coming. Uh, we got our last tomatoes. Still have some thyme and parsley out there, but that's it. We took the sweet potatoes today. My wife made sweet potato chocolate mousse. Something you could do instead of a casserole or just throw them brown sugar and throw them in the oven like everybody else. So have a great night and thank you for everything.